Hello Rutbags, it's Jade. Welcome to another Grounded video. The Shroom and Doom update is on its way, pretty much celebrating the one year anniversary coming close to it for Grounded in early access. A whole bunch got revealed with the trailer that went out a couple days ago. I gave an analysis of that, but we've got even more information today courtesy of the Grounded devs who did a stream on Twitch showcasing a bunch of new stuff. For once, the devs got to share the goodies instead of spoil sports like me and other YouTubers. They showed off a bunch of new building materials the pet system and even more surprises so i'm going to go through some of that stuff what you can expect and hopefully hopefully when we're going to get the pts update so you can go and test some of this stuff out ahead of its proper release on the 30th of june as always for the best in grounded guides tutorials news and opinion make sure you've got me locked on and let's go through everything new about grounded coming here so I showed you guys back in March that mushroom build pieces were coming to the game and finally we got a use for the grinder. Now the grinder has been in the game since its actual first release but it's massively changed now. You could only spawn it in using admin commands but now it's actually a proper thing. Alongside the grinder we've also got the oven. You're going to be putting mushroom pieces into the grinder to make mushroom slurry it looks really cool the devs showed it off all the slurry i really like the animation for it the liquid that's popping out it's just it looks gooey it looks horrible it looks good once that's done you then take the material the slurry from that and you put it inside your oven to make mushroom bricks you can see the progress you can see you've got slots there for four pieces of mushrooms now the mushrooms that are going to be added are toadstools and it does look like it might be a variation of mushrooms or maybe it's just the toadstools you can see that's maybe the small ones that grow so the white little ones too the most important thing about this if you want to unlock the mushroom build pieces you're going to need to go and find the new chip for it which is going to be in the haze laboratory they're opening it up it's not going to be complete it's not going to be finished but you will be able to explore the haze and you will be able to go and get the chip to unlock some of the recipes for the mushroom build pieces so you can see here on screen shyla eric and chris obsidian team talking and showing you how it's done take the slurry outside it comes in these little dishes and they're going to be useful for other things as well that's how you get pets you pop them on the ground and the mushroom one will attract a certain type of pet and it's not the aphids they have let out the bag that weevils are also going to be tameable and it will be adding to the pet collection so straight off we're going to have aphids and weevils as pets so we'll cover that in a minute, but you can see you've got the smoothie bricks or the mushroom bricks and there's five slots for them as well to go ahead and cook and bake. You will also be able to make something else called the Broodmother BLT. Now, I don't think that's necessarily Broodmother meat. I think that would be something that you can distract the Broodmother with by getting it to feed on it and possibly along them lines, something like that. I didn't really show it off. They left that as a kind of still a little bit of something, a surprise to find. Now, when it comes to the pieces themselves, they're fantastic. Look at this. We've got these rounded doors. We've got the curved. Again, we've seen some of this. I showed this guys to you back in March, but this is the real deal now, actually seeing them and what they're going to be like. There's so many brand new build pieces coming in this update. They've got curved pieces. They've got triangle pieces upside down. You'll be able to flip them and rotate them all as well. So many good things coming. It's going to be great to build some castles. I think this will definitely add a lot more depth. Building's been great, it's been really cool, but there is kind of a limit what you can do with stems and grass walls. And now we've got actual proper sort of stone walls rather than just the foundations. This is going to open, open things up massively. I love the little windows as well that you can go through and these little made arches using triangle pieces. In fact, actually, I think that is a arch piece. So you can also get arched windows too or arched walls and open up little doorways, double doors as well. So we'll come back to that in a second, but let's carry on to taking a look at what you can do with the slurries. Now you can also make plant slurry, and that's what aphids are going to eat. You'll literally put some grass planks in there, I do believe, and then it will produce the plant slurry. And this is how you can attract some of the creatures so you can pet them. The dev team have said that you'll be able to have unlimited amount of pets, but there are a few things you need to know. You can only have one active pet at a time, so I'm guessing one pet that will actually follow you. And the pets all have personalities. There's going to be over 100 personalities across the pet spectrum once they introduce the rest of them, I guess. So it'd be really interesting. I'm hoping that some of these personalities mean that some of them might be actually useful in terms of not just being something pretty to look at and walk around you, but some of them may actually protect you. They may give you some buffs and bonuses depending on what their personalities are. But the devs pretty much show that once they're eaten, you can go ahead and pet them. And it's key that petting them is important. You've got to pet them quite a bit to get them to become your pet. 
But that's not all. You can build your own little pet dog house. This is great. This is fantastic. And you can set one of them as a home for whatever pet it is. And that will keep it nice and safe, I'm guessing. You're going to be able to rename the pets. You're going to be able to see its favorite foods. You can see the bonus effect that it gives us. It does give you some sort of buff, the aphid friend. Then the personality. So I'm guessing that's different. I, it's answered my own question. There will be bonus effects, but it might not necessarily be to do with their personality. They will have that separate. Then you've got the happiness, whether they're happy or not. I'm guessing you've got to feed them. And then you've got the pet for one day. So it looks like they won't last forever. You can only keep the pet for one day unless they make it that you can keep it for longer and then times petted too. It's a really interesting concept to me. If you don't know, Pixark, a kind of mock arc version that was made pretty much based on that game, mixing arc and Minecraft, they originally had their idea that pets, their tames, the creatures, would run out. You'd only have them for like eight hours or a day or two days or three days, and people got so upset about that, mainly because they played arc where you could keep your dinosaurs forever. They ended up reverting it, that you'd keep your creatures forever. So I wonder if it's going to be the same or whether it just means that at the moment, until you do something else like feed them a particular food, or pet them enough it's only going to last one day that would probably make more sense if it is the case that they will just disappear after one day i think people will get upset surprisingly and then just to show you the weevil how it works as well again great if you just want resources too putting this on the floor means you'll be able to get plenty of uh well i guess weevil stuff maybe not so much for the aphid unless you really want just some extra aphid meat the dev team were playing in creative mode, so obviously they didn't have to worry about any dangers and stuff. But you can see it's doing a job there, it's feeding, and I like the animations on it as well. The eyes really go big and bulbous. They then set another pet house and they pretty much added the next pet. And this one you can see as well, it's got a personality of a rookie. Doesn't have any bonus effect though. Uh, one day again, and you can see it's been petted four times. I'm just going back to the chat where I was talking to the crew. So a small few other things, you can now sit on chairs, obviously we saw that in a trailer, but you can sit on different types of chairs as well. The more regular standard uh, grass or stem chairs as well, you'll be able to sit on as well as the big berry ones. A few other things to talk about as well, that there will be the achievements being added. There's going to be 20 added when it goes live on the 30th, but it's only going to be on the PTS for Steam users. It does look like the public test server is going to be going live for Xbox as well, but you won't have access to the achievements until the 30th. Now, the achievements themselves, they do look like they're going to be retroactive. Some of them are going to be pretty easy, some of them are going to be pretty tough. You won't get any kind of science rewards, science points by completing some of them. Now, the game actually crashed while they were playing, and and briefly, I saw some of the achievements. So look away now, spoilers, but you'll get an achievement for sitting in a chair. You'll get an achievement for taming a bug. You'll get an achievement for saving Burgle after the oak tree lab explosion. You'll get an achievement for completing the hedge lab, an achievement for obtaining the first mutation and a achievement for getting 15 resources. So that's all pretty cool stuff. I do believe there was a few more floating around, but I couldn't remember where I'd seen them. So let me know if you've seen any other achievements already listed. Another new feature they're showing off here is more building pieces, but this is something I hadn't realized. We're going to get actual proper pillars and the pillars are ranging. You'll get all sorts, not just these grass stem ones. You're going to be able to have clay pillars. You're going to be able to have pebble pillars as well as the mushroom pillars. They all look fantastic. Can't wait to build Colosseum style things with this. And then they showed off lots of the roof parts with the crow feathers. Now the crow feathers, they said they're going to be given a little bit more every time you get some of the crow feathers. So you will be able to make some of the crow roofs a lot easier as well. And they look really cool. Again, really adding something different to the building style. So building is going to become a big, big, much bigger focus, even more than it's already been. And that's great news. There's also going to be a whole bunch of new roof um, pieces as well, like triangular roof pieces um, and roof caps as well, which is really cool, adding a little, again, bit more variety to things. Lots of triangle pieces, lots of rounded pieces, all sorts of different ways you can create. Double doors, and there's going to be all types of double doors as well, looking like you're going to have the mushroom walled double doors too. Now they said all the mushroom pieces will be unlocked with that chip and they are changing the chip slightly. They're trying to make it a bit easier to spot them or you're directed towards them. A lot of people are basically still not realizing that they can unlock new recipes by finding the chips. I think it's about time I did an updated guide and showed you guys how to unlock it or if you're having problems too. So that's one thing they're gonna be doing. They're also maybe slightly adjusting some of the burgle quests to help with that too. And when you do find the chips, they're gonna be pretty big or there'll be some way that you'll recognize what they give you in terms of recipes. 
Now there was some talk about there being some new types of uh, soda cans. Now I'm pretty sure soda cans have been in the game for a while, right? Like it's, it's not nothing that new. But I do believe maybe the repositioning of some of this stuff might have changed a little bit. So yeah, they were kind of going towards something. Just to take a look and see if there was something new. Along the way, they revealed brand new chatter between the characters. If you play a multiplayer, your characters will start talking to each other a little bit more. And that was pretty cool as well. So they actually have proper conversations, not just like one worded answers, but actually dialogue between each other. And that would be really good if that's revolving and changing depending on which character someone is being. New and improved photo modes, you're going to be able to put the time a day wherever you want so the sunshine goes over. You can remove certain characters, you'll be able to adjust different armor types on them and stuff as well as all the poses. And you might notice there's a couple brand new stuffed insects in the background. That's another new feature. You've got big sizes now, you've got the ladybug and obviously the stink bug. Now a few people were asking about the brood mother, how is it going to be, where is it going to be and some people had assumed there might be a second hedge added, it does look like they're going to be adding a hedge in the future to the right hand side of the big shed, but apparently not. The trailer footage that we've seen was from a much much earlier earlier build or, or later building development so that hedge might not be there. So it does look like the brood mother will be back where we found them normally in that hedge area but it's going to be maybe a slightly different location where we're going to find the nest. They've said that they want feedback on the bus fight, whether it's too easy or too hard, but it's definitely going to be a lot more challenging than people think. Also, if you've seen a lot of the new armor pieces, the roller ponies, unfortunately, they're not going to be in the game yet. We've got no real big new insects in the game. The roly polies are not being added in this one. So if you do see any kind of roly poly armor, which some of you guys pointed out, I reckon it will be one of the rotten kind that we've had in the past. So it gives you an idea what to expect. They also said, as I mentioned, that the Hab, the Hab Laze, the Haze Lab, won't be finished or complete yet. There will still be more changes, but there may be an interesting new creature design or something, some sort of Easter egg or a creature in that area. So maybe another little hint about what's to come, maybe stuck in one of the laboratory sort of vials that you get to see. So when is this all going live? Well, they are doing a talk with Xbox Extra tomorrow. There's a brand new show going over some of the stuff. It's going to be the lead creator, Adam, as well as Eric taking a little talk with, I do believe, Paris from Xbox. And this is going to be, I reckon, when they're going to reveal the PTS. I'm pretty sure they're also going to say that the PTS will go live tomorrow. That's my hunch. I think it will go live tomorrow. I don't think they're going to just say it's going to come out in a week's time. Most people are assuming the 23rd because it normally goes live a week before, but I think they're going to go, yep, it's live, it's ready to go tomorrow as a little surprise for everyone. If I'm wrong in that, you go ahead and let me know, but that's just my gut feeling, hence why they've got like a bit of a prominent position talking again on an Xbox show about stuff. Also, they made a big point about the price of the game at the moment, and I did notice that in a few other bits of marketing that I've seen, that it is $29.99. Now, they have said at the beginning that the game would go up in price in stages. It might not necessarily go up in big parts, like from $29.99 to $50.99, but they are looking to increase the price as they go through early access at different stages. Now, this is fairly unusual. There's a few games that have done this. I don't necessarily think it's the way to go, but there are some games that do this. Scum is a different survival game altogether, but they have increased the price of their game by about $5 every sort of year. They've been in early access like nearly two and a half years now, so they've gone up from like, I don't know, it was like $14.99 to like $24.99 or something like that. And so not many early access games do this, but yeah, it, I think the way that they were talking about it, it does look like Grounded might not be $29.99 forever. Obviously, it continues to be in the Games Pass, so that's all good. Also, they do talk very, very briefly about VR in the far, far, far future that they once had a working version of VR or they'd implemented it, but it isn't something they're really focusing on just yet. So that'll be obviously for PC players, as I don't think there's an Xbox VR kit at the moment. I didn't really talk about too much about the new armor pieces and stuff like that that we've seen in the trailer or any of the other stuff. Um, and they said they wanted to keep some stuff obviously as a surprise, like the Broodmother, so we didn't get a chance to see that as well. As said, I do believe we'll reckon that I'll find like more rotten pieces, and I reckon it will be tied to the Broodmother still for some of that roly-poly armor and maybe even the black ant armor sets we've seen. 
So there we go. As always, there with the info you need about Grounded. I'll be here, hopefully, I'm praying it does go live tomorrow because I'll have plenty of time then to go and make content for you guys. Otherwise, I'm on holiday next week, so I'm praying it happens before then. But I'll be definitely back anyway on the 30th at least when it goes live for everyone if you're not interested in downloading the test servers. So any more info, big info about this, I'll let you guys know. Until next time, I'll catch you later.